Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can recover detail lost in really, really bad shadows in Photoshop and Lightroom. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to do. On this side of the image here, I have the original photograph that I took. Now, it was shot in a city area and there were a lot of tall buildings around and it was really, really bright sunlight. It's the kind of image that I couldn't go back and take again because I was only there for a short time. So I really only could take this image. But I want to use the detail of this graffiti in another project later on. And for that, I needed to be able to see the rest of the image. And so what this video tutorial is going to do is show you how you can recover detail so that your image can look like this when it started out looking like this. So now that we know exactly what it is that we're seeking to do, let's get started. And for this, I'm going to start in Lightroom. Now I'm going to start in Lightroom because I find the graduated filter tool a little bit easier to work in Lightroom, but you can do the same thing in Adobe Camera Raw. And if you're using Photoshop CC, then Adobe Camera Raw is available as a filter inside Photoshop. So that's another easy way of working with this image or an image that's similar to this. Now let's see this image at the largest size possible. What I'm going to do first of all is try and fix this shadow problem and I'm going to do it using a graduated filter. This is the graduated filter here in Lightroom and as I said it's also available in Photoshop through Adobe Camera Raw. Now this transition here between the shadow and the well lit area is very very steep. There's a very steep effect change here. So I'm just going to click and drag so that I create a very narrow graduated filter here. I'm going to try and get it to the angle that I want it to be. Now I can test that by increasing the exposure here and just make sure that I'm not getting a line where I'm missing out on fixing the problem. Now I think I've made actually quite a really good selection here. So I'm just going to tone that down a little bit and I'm going to work on these sliders to get the result that I want. I want to get some detail out of the shadows. You can see that this is boosting the saturation a little bit so I may want to take the saturation down. I may also want to make the colors a little bit bluer because this is going to be more blue because it's shot in sunshine. So this might need to be a little bluer to adjust for that. I still think I'm a little bit light on this side. And if you don't think that you've got your adjustment perfectly right, you can drag on these lines here in the graduated filter to smooth it out to make it either wider or narrower as you need to. Now I would work a little bit in Lightroom until I had the best possible adjustment here. I'm going to call this good for now even though it's not perfect, but we'll take this to Photoshop and see what we can do inside Photoshop to recover the extra little bit of detail. So I'm going to click Done. And before I leave Lightroom, I would also adjust the rest of the image. So I might increase the exposure a little bit or fiddle with the exposure. I might adjust clarity and vibrance just to get a good image before I send it to Photoshop. Now before I do, I think I could get a little bit more of an adjustment here, maybe a little bit more lightness out of the shadows. Okay. So once I've got that, I'm going to right click and choose Edit in Adobe Photoshop CC and I'm going to take it out with Lightroom Adjustments. Now back in Photoshop, we have the image here. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate of this background layer just so that if I make any errors or anything, I've got the original background layer that I can go back to. Now, one of the tools that I might use here, and I'm going to use a whole range of tools, is the Spot Healing Brush tool, because that will allow me to get rid of some of these lines. I'm going to check Sample All Layers, because that means that I can put my edits on a new layer. So I've added a new blank layer by just clicking the Add Layer icon there, and now I can drag over the problem areas and Photoshop will fix them for me. 
what I'm really concerned to do here is to get rid of anything that sort of smacks of there was a vertical line through this image. If something doesn't work, I'm just going to click undo. But I want to sort of smooth out this detail that is through this vertical line in the image because if we don't see portions of it then it's going to be less apparent that there actually was a shadow here in the first place. I'm going to ignore her dress for right now. If I get to an area where I don't have enough detail I'm going to click and start using the clone stamp tool. I'll alt or option click on an area of the image to use to paint and then just paint over it. Again, I want to make sure that here I'm sampling current and below. So I'll just make sure I'm sampling the right area, which I am now, and I can paint over it. If there are any other areas that I need to do that to, I can do that now, perhaps on the camel's nose here. Again, just trying to even out this and make it less apparent that there was ever a problem vertically through this image. If we don't see hints of it, we're less likely to believe that it was there. Having done that, I'm now going to fix her dress because you can see that the color is going a little bit haywire. I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool here and I'm going to set a 5x5 five five average. What that allows me to do is to sample a 5x5 five five piece of her dress to get the color from it. I'm going to add a brand new layer to the image. I'm going to select a brush and I want a brush that is a reasonable size and probably like a softish edge. So I'm thinking maybe a 43% soft edge. On this brand new layer, I'm going to paint in this pink color and I'm not the slightest bit worried that I am just painting big slabs of pink right now. What I do want to do is go over any areas of this image that need the pink fixed. Now this darker area we're going to have to fix in a minute another way. But I think this is a pretty good effect here. This is the pink that I want and what I'm going to do is to set this blend mode of this layer to darken and what that does is it darkens the areas where it was lighter previously. And if necessary, I could also adjust down the opacity to try and blend this in a little bit more. And again, now that I've done that, I might want to come in with a brand new layer and use the Spot Healing Brush tool to get rid of any transitions that are just not looking quite right. In this area here, I probably would have been better off to have fixed this in Lightroom before I came into Photoshop, but since I am in Photoshop, I could do this using a, the Adobe Camera Raw plugin. So I'm going to press Control Alt Shift E to get a new layer made out of the whole of this image. I'm going to right click it and convert it to Smart Object and having done this, I'll choose Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. That allows me access to the Camera Raw filter inside Photoshop. So now I can click and drag over this area of the image that I think needs a little bit of lightning and I don't want that much lightning. So I'm just going to readjust these tools to their original by zeroing them all off. And now I can lighten this a little bit. And all I'm looking for is this blending in of the darker area into the areas around it. Now if that's too much, I can switch my brushes. So I'm going to press Alt or Option and I can just go through and just brush out the areas where I got just a little bit too much of the dress in. Again, I'm just looking to smooth this out a little bit. And when I'm done, I'll just click OK and we can go back to Photoshop and we've got the fix in place here. If I need to, I can add a new layer and then just fine tune this with a little bit of work with the clone stamp tool. Again, sampling some of the pink around here and just painting over it to try and blend it in. Once I've done that, I think I've just painted something bad into the middle of her skirt there, so let's just get rid of that. 
Once I've done this, I will probably just go and increase the saturation of the whole of the image. So let's just zoom out here and I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer, actually probably a vibrance adjustment layer. I'll go to layer, new adjustment layer and I'll choose vibrance and click OK. And this now allows me to adjust the vibrance or the color in the image. Vibrance increases the overall saturation of all colors in the image but protects against oversaturating things such as the pink that we're looking at here. I think I pretty much want to boost the vibrance across the board here for this image so I'll do that and then close this dialog. What I seem to have done a bit is to blow out her dress. So I'm going to come back down to this background layer. I'm going to make a selection of her dress using the magic wand tool because that will allow me to click on the pink areas in her dress here and then shift click on anything else to add it to that area. And then once I've got the pink pretty much selected, I can go and make a mask out of this. So let me just select the last little bits here. And now let's go up to the vibrance layer here. I'm going to target the mask here, make sure black is my foreground color, and then just press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac. What that does is it pastes in her dress as a mask so that the vibrance adjustment now is affecting everything in this image except for her dress so we're not getting quite the bright pink that we had previously. So that's how I fix an image like this. I'd probably take a little bit more care to try and make that transition even a little bit more seamless. But it is possible to get rid of really, really bad shadows in an image with some constructive use of either Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw's graduated filter and some of your other favorite tools in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more tutorials on this YouTube channel and consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be alerted when new video tutorials are released. Visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator, Photoshop Elements and a whole lot more.